in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed while standing, please help me honor my dear friend and brother, Apostle Felix and his dear wife. Let's give them a big, big God bless you. Amen. And um, to also honor his spiritual father, a great man of God, Apostle Anselm and the dear wife. Please let's give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. My honor to every man, woman of God in this place. It's a joy to bring God's word to us because the power of God always goes the direction of his word. You can always know where the power of God is because what God is saying is what his power is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. The power of God has no assignment. It remains dormant until God says so if God has not spoken the anointing has no assignment the assignment of the anointing is derived from its ability to make what God says never look like a lie hallelujah so if God is speaking and moving right the anointing cannot be left Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 when you read from verse 3 and 3, the Bible says that God himself spoke from Teman and that the Holy One from Mount Paran. Please give us Habakkuk 3 and verse 4 and then we'll sit down. Habakkuk 3 and verse 4. If we can get the amplified version, the Bible says, And his brightness was as the light, and he had coming out of his hand, Amplified rendition will put it, it says, and in that sun-like splendor from his hand was the hiding place of his power. So his power is hidden in his light. Wherever the light of God is, that is where his power hides. Hallelujah. That means what you are receiving tonight is more than a lecture, is more than a discussion. Are we together? The word of God would always precede his power. That means you must expect a performance in your life. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes, for unto her, not unto them, unto she that believes, there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken of by the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands in one minute and let us ask the spirit of grace to grant us access to light and access to truth. Go ahead and pray. Are there people of prayer? Go ahead. Nekete braskata balako shata freskete balako siata mandas kati fresse de bahasha de katos libas ke fresse te gete beleko shati atabata. You are praying. Let's take a minute or two and just pray in the spirit as we open up our hearts to receive superior light that lifts. Shkalis kate branda kaparaso prekatos kali fregetu siata. Embratas kadavala shata prandas kadebala kosha vregedebele kotosiata. Inabashalas kofrianta kaparotesiata. Change us, O God. 
Let us go from grace to grace, strength to strength. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we obtain mercy tonight, even by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you breathe upon our lives and let tonight be an encounter that reveals Jesus in and through us. For in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you again. So I'll begin my teaching wherever we stop for tonight. We'll just hang on there and then we'll continue all through the sessions that I have with you. May I please request that you lend me your attention and I want you to please listen and be attentive. The word of God is very powerful. The word of God, among many things, defines the jurisdiction of God's commitment to men. God cannot be committed to men outside of the provisions that scripture allows. It's important for you to understand that God has limited his dealings with man to the provisions that scripture allows. Hallelujah. It is within his power to do all things, but he has chosen as an act of his will to limit his dealings with men to only the provisions that his word allows. That means if the word of God does not make provision for it, even though God can do all things, his power cannot be released to bless you except and unless if that which you desire is within the scope of the word of God. The word of God creates the boundary of God's commitment to man. Hallelujah. So I'll be teaching along the theme and um, let's see how far God will help us in the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Proverbs 4, 18. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that, let's go back to King James, God bless you. It says the path of the just is as the shining light, King James says, that shineth more and more. Someone prophesy, say more and more. That means more and more is the heritage of the saints in Christ. Not more once, more and more. The Bible says the path. That means an individual does not have to say I am justified. I need to study your path. If I see the more and more, one level of triumph, one level of excellence, one level of kingdom accomplishment. He says the path of the just is as a shining light. It shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The perfect day being the day of Jesus. So we know clearly from scripture that it is in our destiny in Christ to excel. It is in our destiny in Christ to rise to superior levels spiritually and otherwise. Are we together? Furthermore, the Bible is full of several promises that speak to our enlargement and our increase. The Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that it is in God's mind for the saints in light to increase and to enlarge. A few scriptures, please. Psalm 115 and verse 14. Psalm 115 and verse 14. Psalm 115. Did I get that? Well, please look for the scripture for me. The Lord shall increase you more and more. That's right. That's it. The Lord shall increase you more and more. Say amen. amen. You and your children is a risk. Listen, it is a risk for your increase to be limited to you alone. God is always transgenerational in his scope. He says the Lord increase you more and more, you and your children. Isaiah 54, the first three verses, Isaiah 54, give us one, two, and three. We're establishing the scriptures that speak to our enlargement and our increase because it's important for us to know that our desire for expansion is captured within the will of God. Hallelujah. 
It says, sing, O Barry, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not travail with children, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Reading to three. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. He says, spare not, enlarge thy court and strengthen thy state. The blessing is in verse three. I wish we see it to read it together. Ready? One to read. Verse 3. And on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities. So we see again from scripture that God is the God of increase. It is, it is consistent that in his dealings with men, he increases and he brings enlargement. Let me give you two more scriptures. Job chapter 8 and verse 7. Job 8 and verse 7. Shibakoski anahaska branduski Job 8 and verse 7. It says, though thy beginning was small. Let me prophesy to someone. In the name of Jesus Christ. That though thy beginning was small. He say, yet thy later end should greatly increase. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That means the version of you that came for this conference is not the version of you that will finish this year. Yeah. Though thy beginning is small. You must learn to look from the lens of scripture. Are we together? It is not unscriptural to start small. It is only unscriptural when you stay small. Though thy beginning were small, yet your later end should be greatly increased. The last scripture and I begin to teach, Genesis 17 and verse 6. I received this for myself. It's a very powerful and profound scripture. 17, 6, Genesis. It says, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Is that in your Bible? And I will make nations of thee. It says, and kings shall come out. Do you know what that means? Every good thing that you did not come out of can still come out of you. I will make you exceeding fruitful. If you came out of pain, don't let pain come out of you. If you came out of poverty, don't let poverty come out of you. It says kings will come out of you. Hallelujah. So we are safe to discuss the subject of enlargement because we've established from scripture that is consistent with God's character and it is in line with his word and his will. This is what gives us the audacity to teach because anything that is inconsistent with the will of God cannot have his backing. Are we together? So as we sojourn this discussion of increase and enlargement, it is important for you to throw away any fears that religion may bring around your life as to the validity of God's desire to increase you. That's why I took the time to show you from scripture. We are safe to discuss this. Because it is within the boundary of God's will. We are, we are sure for certain, based on the integrity of scripture, that we are not outside of the will of God to discuss the idea of enlargement. So can we discuss now? The reason why many people do not experience increase the reason why many people do not experience enlargement is because among the many reasons we do not understand the structure, listen carefully, there is a structure and there is a modus operandi as far as God's dealing with men is concerned. You need to understand the mysteries of the earth and how the entire design of this earth came about. And for you to have that understanding and that level of spiritual intelligence, you need to go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, Paul was speaking, verse 3 says, Through faith we understand that the walls were framed. Just help those under the anointing. Through faith we understand, verse 3, Hebrews 11, 3. Let's walk together, media, verse 3. 
through faith we understand we were not there but we understand that the walls were framed listen carefully the word frame means they had their material expression by the word of god so that the things which are seen now this is a powerful modus operandi that if the things which are seen are never made out of things which are seen that the things which are seen are only seen because they have their spiritual parallel. Please follow me very carefully. For anything that ever finds a visible expression, the Bible tells you that number one, it hails from the realm of the spirit and number two, there must be a spiritual parallel to that reality. That means if failure manifests physically, Two informations about that failure. One, it came from the realm of the spirit. Number two, it has a, a spiritual equivalence. If favor manifests physically, it tells you, number one, that the origin of that favor was not earthly. If it is genuine favor, it came from the realm of the spirit. And number two, there is a parallel in the spirit. Are we together now? It's important for us to understand this because you see, when you come into the kingdom, you are at liberty to choose two routes as far as your spiritual adventure is concerned. Number one, you can walk the way of the natural man. The Bible says that means you can shadow box and guess your way using parameters like instincts and logic and maybe science and all of that. The problem is that has a, a high margin of error because you are dealing with a realm that connects to the realm of the spirit. So there is a limitation to your life when you choose to approach life sensually, just using instincts, just using experimentation. And sometimes the risk of that adventure may not even give you a second chance to correct your mistakes. Are we together now? So we have two parts as far as our destiny adventure is concerned. Number one is the way of the natural man. Number two is the way of the spiritual man. Let me define for you very quickly the Bible's parameter for a spiritual man. There are two biblical indices to measure genuine spirituality. Number one, your degree of submission to the supremacy of the word of God as the principal influencer of your understanding. You are not spiritual just because you sing spiritual songs. You are not spiritual just because you are in church for a long time, although that can help. The biblical index of spirituality is, number one, the degree to which you have chosen as an act of your will to submit to the word of God, not as an opinion, as authority. And then number two, the degree to which you have brought yourself under the influence of the leadership of the Holy Spirit. If these two indices are not captured in your spiritual experience, you are not spiritual. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. So a quick recap. We are given the privilege to route our destinies using the pathway of the natural man. Are we together now? Yeah. Or the pathway of the spiritual man. And so if and when you choose to follow the path of the spiritual man, it then means you have to trust the Holy Spirit's leadership for the spiritual intelligence that you will have to navigate that path. The Bible says there is a path or a way that seemeth right. It seems right. Even darkness looks like light from afar. It is when you come close, you will find out that it was, it was not light. So it seems right. Sometimes you can follow that path and it's after 12 years you will know you are wrong. That would be a waste of time and a waste of destiny. Are we together? So we're discussing the path of the spiritual man. It's very important for you to know this. The Bible says the earth was so designed that it cannot have life and meaning until and unless it is connected to the spirit realm. Are we together? The economy of the kingdom is tied on this principle. It is the spirit realm first and then the earth only becomes the child of the spirit realm. That means you are already at a loss if you discuss things and deal with things naturally alone. 
are we together now? That your first port of call, either in creation or in correction or in managing anything physical, is that you must go to the realm of the spirit and make those changes there. And then you can expect that the changes will manifest physically. I need you to understand this as a foundation. So, our results in the physical realm are only report cards to the health of our understanding the spiritual dynamics. If I see your life marred with poverty and failure, I don't care what business you are doing and I don't care what you are not doing physically. I know that number one, there is an error in your understanding this principle. You have neglected something in the spirit that is showing in the physical realm. Are we together? And then if I look at your life and I find favor, grace, wisdom, I will not credit it to the physical thing that seems to be what is bringing you the result. No. There must be something you have done correct in the realm of the spirit. Listen, if you have this understanding, it is half your challenge is solved. That means the problem is never the boss in the office. No, you are already getting it wrong. The problem is not the absence of land. The problem is not even the infirmity in your body. The problem is that the physical realm is helplessly under the influence of the realm of the spirit. <laughs> Failure to know this will only waste your time, waste your energy, waste your resources. This is the mystery behind profitless living. Where people follow the path of the natural man with no honor and no appreciation for the realm of the spirit. The Bible says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things we now see, are we together now? We're not made of things which do appear. In John chapter 1, Apostle John was now um, teaching us something. It was his synoptic account but he approached it from a very intelligent standpoint. He says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. My verse of emphasis is verse 3. It says, through him. Are we together now? Where all things, all things were made by him. How many things? It didn't say all material things. That means even when we go to the realm of the spirit, the, way, the word of God is still gained supremacy. It made everything. The word of God did not just make the material things. All things were made by him. And without him, that means outside of his influence, was not anything made that was made. Hallelujah. So there is nothing that is ever made, genuinely made, that honors God and blesses the saints that did not come in partnership with the word of God. All things were made by him and there was not anything made without him that was made. So this is very important. The spiritual man approaches his faith adventure from the realm of the spirit that is the realm of creation. That is the realm of correction. That is the realm of adjustment. That is what gives us audacity. We face life to the degree to which we know and understand that we have done our due diligence as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned. When David came to confront Goliath, it would be stupid of that small boy to stand before this man with six fingers and six toes using the strength of the flesh. He mentioned very clearly the basis of his approach. He said, you come to me with your bows and spheres. Goliath, you are dead already. I come to you in a name. He didn't say, I came to you by a sling. The sling is there, but I can't give credit to the sling. You see, he honored the fact that he, the basis of his confidence was because certain things had been sorted in the spirit. Any part of Goliath the sling hit, he would have killed him because Goliath died before he died. Yeah. 
Are we together now? So it's important for us to understand this. This is spiritual intelligence God is giving us. Immediately, an intelligent Bible student can begin to suggest what may be wrong if you are not getting the result. can tell you this. The church will not just increase because of billboards and telling people just come. No, you're making a mistake already. Increase does not reside within the world of men. Is it not in your Bible? Paul planted, Apollos watered. Who gave the increase? So increase is not affordable. There is nowhere on earth that sells increase. There is no product as increase in the earth. Buy increase anywhere. It's a commodity that is not earthly. You have to outsource the realm of the spirit to purchase that commodity called increase. Listen. Please, while you're rejoicing, I hope you're, I, I need to drum this. This foundation you wouldn't believe that. now listen listen anytime you find there are rocks that a few scientists have been able to bring from another planet is that true and they look at it and say this is not of earthly origin they carbon date them and tell you this rock belongs to another planet increase is a commodity it is not sold in the earth but it can be used in the earth you can, you can purchase increase like a product from the realm of the spirit and bring it to the earth and you will see its value. People can look at you and say, no, I, I see the fruit of increase. You have this increase. La Shalagrata. Yes, you Yes, you are. Sit down. My assignment tonight is to bring you to a place in the spirit where you can do this strange spiritual transaction to teach you how to do business in the realm of the spirit. By business, I don't mean buying and selling. That's in the realm of men. In the realm of the spirit, we don't buy and sell. No. Please pay attention. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Bring for me.
be two ladies now that will shout loud under the anointing. Please hold them and bring them now. Mechanical shout. The power of God is coming on two ladies. Please. In a room, for instance, and you're with an old woman, before you send on an errand, you think twice. My fellow old woman <laughs> should not be sent to do this and do that. But when you're with a young girl, you can easily say, hey, go there, go there, go there. <laughs> the Lord bless you and, and thank God for, for her life. She's been a blessing. Amen. All right, let's go. This is a word from Jehovah God. First Samuel 9. the glory forever. That is true for one in ministry. You are a man of God. That is true for a whatever it is. The modus operandi and the protocol is that it be done in earth as it is in heavens. So you need to find out how it is in heaven first. In Job chapter 38 and verse 33. Job was a man who at this time was frustrated because of the plethora of problems that had come upon Job. Verse 33, 38, 33. And he spoke, he says, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? No, you import the technology that made that domain the way it is. Now, there are many sincere believers who want to see the outstretched arm of God. They want to experience, in, uh, to experience increases. But most times, we have well-intentioned desires, but we lack the spiritual understanding as to how to be able to transport these realities. Now I want to show you the keys. Please pray in the spirit in one minute that the Lord would open your eyes. Shagada barakatoshka da brandege balasso prakotosko dubashiata. 
Ragada balakas ke brende ke balakus ya tabarasusia. Hallelujah. 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 There is a woman here you have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I'm seeing four years. One, two, three, four. Who is that person? Four years. I, I'm, I'm teaching but the Lord just spoke to me. It's time for you to come and receive. Are you sure? Where are you coming from? You're here? Can I pray for you? Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, even by the Spirit of God, according to the time of life, The anointing is coming on one of you right now. Who is in front here? Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call upon he who has the key of David. The Bible says that opens and no man can shut. For the womb is a gate even in the realm of the spirit. And by the authority of the holder of that key, we declare your wombs, a fata, be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ, be opened above and against every power of witchcraft and the enchantments of men in the name of Jesus Christ let it be as he has spoken by the power of the word of God return with your testimonies let this ordeal and this plague come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you let me have your attention again. You can return back to your seat, please. So, let me start by revealing to us what is the first key that controls enlargement, controls increase in the kingdom. Following the path of the spiritual man. There is a technology that God has made available for the saints in light. That if and when activated, just leave those under the anointing. When they are fine, they can go back. We don't call them out just for show. There is something the Spirit of God is doing. Are we together? Yes. Increase. Increase. Three people are running out now by the anointing. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. The power of God is coming and begin to run physically. Is the grace for speed. Please help them so they don't injure themselves, whether you are an usher or not. Hmm. This is what happens when the glory of the Lord is revealed. This is more than some spiritual jamboree. I know that, unfortunately, spiritual things have been abused and mismanaged. And sometimes when we see some of these manifestations, please make no mistake to think this is just a display of flesh. There are people who fear God and by the grace of God have been taught well even by the Spirit. The goal of all this is to bring maximum edification to the body and no glorification of self in any way whatsoever. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is the first key? Number one. For everyone who truly desires to step into levels of increase, the first key is to sustain the seeing eye and the hearing ear. Please write it. It is impossible for you to tap into the realm of increase without the blessedness of the seeing eye and the hearing ear. If this is where we stop tonight, then God be glorified. Let's discuss this. Proverbs 20 and verse 12 says, The seeing eye, 2012, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, it is the Lord that made both of them. Now listen, he made them as a gift. That there is the advantage of a seeing eye. Now notice, the Bible never said ears and eyes. It says a hearing ear. That means not every ear hears. 
a seeing eye. That means not every eye sees. Don't, don't assume you understand what I'm saying. Just listen carefully. There is a seeing eye and there is a hearing ear. And the Bible says God made them. These are not biological materials at all. We are not talking of this and this. This and this is only a physical parallel. Are we together? Help those under the anointing. Sight. Please look at me. Sight, even in the physical realm, is a combination of two factors. Apostle Felix, sight is a product of your eyes plus light. Is that true? It's impossible to have sight just because you have an eye. It is the union of your eye plus light. If we switch off the light in this beautiful auditorium and still leave your eyes, you will stop seeing even though you have eyes. So you cannot say I have sight just because you have an eye. It takes more than an eye to have sight. Is someone listening now? The eye is a necessary tool for sight, but not the only reason for sight. For some of you, you have the eye component. The missing ingredient is the light. The most important element that your car has in the night is the headlight. Not the color of the car. Not even the kind of the car. I don't care what kind of car you have. If it does not have high level illumination in the night, you are at risk. Sight, listen, is your eye plus light. Hearing is your ears plus sound. You don't hear just because you have an ear. It is the union of that ear plus sound. Are we together? Just hang on one minute. Stop. You are not hearing anything from me because although you have the ears, there is no sound. Are we together? Thank you. So, the Bible says the hearing the seeing eye put his son on the altar when he lifted the knife if he did not have this ear he would have killed his son he had the ear that could say go and the ear that could say stop Abraham would have killed his son not because it was the will of God for Isaac to die Isaac's survival literally dependent on the hearing ear so when you are claiming the blessing of abraham make sure you understand everything abraham had that really made him blessed <laughs> i wish i had time tonight the hearing ear this is the miracle that many people do not have you want enlargement, you want to move from one level to the other. But most believers have not trained themselves. It says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later time some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of devils. But the, the point is the spirit speaketh expressly. The spirit speaketh expressly. But he only speaks and those who hear him are those who have the hearing ear. It can be the difference between your level here in business. It's not the product. It's the hearing ear. 
have you mastered the technology of hearing the sounds of heaven? Oh, Ezekiel, you can stand before those dry bones and not know what to say because we only prophesy as we hear commanded. Could it be that God said many things last year? You didn't move because you did not hear. You were dull of hearing. Listen, the way of the spiritual man is a delicate pathway. If you miss the hearing of God for a season, that can be the end of it. He lifted the knife. What God said yesterday, be sure it is still what he's saying now. It is the same God who said, take Isaac. But could it be he has said, stop and you did not hear? It was the same God that said, go to Durban. But could it be he has said, come back? It was the same God that said, start real estate. Could it be that he has now said, go to oil and gas? The hearing ear. Many believers stay where God said. But do not stay where God is saying. Please listen. This is a very prophetic message. Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son whom thou lovest, and go and offer him as a sacrifice. He would have shut down his hearing. But even at the point of sacrifice, he knew. And he lifted the knife and he said, stop. For now I know that you fear me. He said, and in blessing, I swear by myself, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Listen to me. Please listen to me. I can tell you that most believers are where they are. Everything is right. Except that their ears have not been trained to hear. The next thing is the seeing eye. You may have the eye, but the light that helps you see is not there. The Bible says, when for sake of time, please listen carefully, is God speaking to you? When Abraham came to rescue Lot, his cousin, apostle, he got into Sodom and Gomorrah, and when the men saw the angels, they wanted to sodomize them. Are we together? And Lord said, no, don't bring this kind of reproach against us. I will even give you my daughters. And they said, no, we want this man. And the Bible says the angels in anger drew Lord inside and struck the people with blindness. And then the Bible says they wearied themselves in front of the door. They were right in front of the door, but because they did not have the eyes... You can be right in front of the door. The season is right. You are in the right the location. miracle of open you eyes had right, has not been given to just you. just because the miracle of open eyes do. has not been given to you. Your says I shall not want thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way this is the way means there are other ways if that's the only way he cannot say this is the way there are many options all leading to several places some of you right now by this teaching if you really have the, the hearing ear, you will have to turn back because you've been walking on a path. God has been at the place saying, listen, can't you hear me? Your ministry should not be at this level. Your business should not be at this level. The problem is not membership. Stop blaming the wrong things. It is the lack of hearing and lack of seeing. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here,
kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching